Siren. Siren was sitting right in front of him. How did he get there? Tommy thought sluggishly before he tried to scoot away from the man in front of him, but that proved to be difficult due to the gaping wound in his abdomen. Siren frowned. Stop moving. Tommy froze, staring at the villain, fear sparkling in his eyes. I'm not going to hurt you, Siren said, reaching towards him. Tommy flinched away from the hand, reaching in his direction. Don't touch me, he tried to snap, but it came out more like a pitiful whine. You're hurt, Siren said, curls falling over his mask. Brown curls falling over his mask. I don't need help from a villain, Tommy hissed. The man frowned. Come on, Red, you're sitting in a puddle of your own blood. Tommy glared up at the villain, beginning to feel the effects of Siren's power wear off. Come on, let- Tommy saw Siren's eyes widen, but he did not let the villain finish his sentence before lurching to his feet and proceeding to run out of the alleyway and stagger into the open road. Tommy felt a wave of dizziness crash over him and he stumbled, but continued to run. He only stopped running once he was in front of Tubbo's apartment building. Tommy staggered inside, heading for the elevator. It took him a little longer than he would like to admit to press the button to, the, to his floor, but when the elevator finally opened, he was greeted with a very worried Tubbo. Where have you been? Tubbo demanded worriedly. I'm fine. Tommy slurred before the world went black. Tubbo was pacing length of the hallway in front of the elevator. There was a soft ding and Tubbo whipped around to see Tommy, blood dripping from his stomach. Where have you been? Tubbo demanded. I'm fine. Tommy slurred before his eyes rolled back and he pitched forward. Tubbo lunged forward catching Tommy before he could hit the ground. Rambo! Tubbo screamed. Tommy's hurt! Tubbo slung Tommy's arm over his shoulder, pulling him towards their apartment door. Rambo was rushing around, looking for all the things he would need to treat Tommy's wound. Tubbo carefully laid Tommy on the couch, lifting his shirt to see the extent of the damage. He let out a small gasp of horror when he saw the gaping hole in his friend's stomach. Rambo came rushing over, hands full of bandages. Tubbo saw his eyes widen at the sight of the wound. Oh my god, Rambo murmured. Beginning to bandage the wound, Tommy whined softly and Rambo flinched, checking to-, to make sure Tommy was still asleep before continuing. Who did this? Tubbo asked, softly, his eyes dark. I don't know, but we will ask Tommy when he wakes up, and we will make sure they get justice, Rambo said darkly, placing a hand on Tubbo's shoulder. But for now we will wait. Tubbo nodded, not taking his eyes off Tommy's sleeping form. Tubbo, let's get some sleep, Rambo said gently, tugging Tubbo's arm towards their bedroom. But he needs me, Tubbo mumbled, not fighting against Rambo's gentle tugging. We can't help him if we're exhausted, Rambo said softly. Maybe you're right, Tubbo mumbled, stumbling towards their sleeping quarters with a last sorrowful glance in Tommy's direction. Chapter 2 He ran, Phil, with a literal hole in his gut, Wilbur fretted, head in his hands. Well, you tried your best, mate. There's nothing more you could have done, Phil pointed out. I should have done more. Are you still fretting over that little hero? Techno asked, coming down the stairs, book in hand. Yeah, I'm still fretting over the little hero blade, Wilbur snapped. Didn't mean to upset you, well, Techno deadpanned, raising his hands in mock surrender. Sure you didn't, Wilbur scoffed, turning away from his brother. I'm sure he's fine, mate, Phil paused. If it makes you feel better, we can look for him tonight. Thanks, Dadza, Wilbur said, giving Phil a weak smile. No worries, mate. A few hours later, Wilbur was was getting slightly more packed. That was an understatement. Tommy hadn't come home when he was supposed to, which was an hour ago. Wilbur was trying not to panic, telling himself he was just running a little late, but deep down he knew that wasn't the case. He had a feeling Tommy's disappearance on fists had something to do with Red. Oops. With Red. When Tommy woke, the first thing he noticed was the immense pain in his stomach. And he let out a low moan of pain before forcing his eyes open, before quickly closing them, deciding it was too bright. After a moment, he cracked one eye open before slowly pushing himself into a sitting position. Tommy winced as he lifted his shirt to see the extent of his injury. He was in surprise when he saw his entire stomach covered in a thick layer of plasters. He lowered his shirt as he looked around. He was sitting on the couch in the living room. In front of their TV, which was on, Tommy noted. Tommy reached for the remote on the table next to him and winced as he moved. He switched on the news, narrowing his eyes as he saw the headline. Vigilante Red defeated once and for all? Tommy scoffed, but but instead fast-forwarded the footage of the fight. He was blurry, sure, but it was clear enough to see Tommy tossed into an alleyway after Dream had stabbed him. 
Tommy turned the TV off just as w- Tubbo walked out of their bedroom. He looked like he had been through a war. His hair was matted and unkempt, and his hair had dark bags under his eyes. Even so, Tubbo's eyes filled with relief when he saw Tommy awake and upright. Hey, Tubbs. Tommy croaked. Tubbo rushed over, wrapping his arms gently around Tommy's shoulders. Tommy returned the hug gratefully, and they both quiet. They both let out quiet sobs. It only seemed like a few moments Tubbo leaned back. You're such an idiot, Tubbo shouted. I thought you were going to die. I can't die, I'm a big man, Tommy gently teased, nudging Tubbo's shoulder with his arm. Besides, it wasn't even that bad. Not that bad, you had a hole through your stomach, Tommy. Tommy waved his hands dismissively. I'm fine now, though. Tubbo glanced at the clock. Well, I gotta get ready for p- patrol. See you later, Tubzo, Tommy said, getting up and beginning to head towards the bedroom. Before Tommy could get far, Tubbo grabbed his arm. Patrol! Tommy, you you can't be serious, right? You're hurt, Tubbo said, worry sparkling in his gaze. Tubbo, Tommy said with a pain look on his face. You know the hears don't do anything. Besides, people are dying and getting hurt right now. I have to go on patrol. But, Toby, I'm going on patrol, but I, I won't do any fighting, all right? I'll, I'll wear my earpiece, Tommy said hesitantly. I'll be careful, I promise. Okay, but come home at any sign of a fight, all right, Tubbo said, dragging Tommy into a quick hug before letting go. Tommy turned to w- Tubbo turned to walk away with a final glance over his shoulder. Good luck, he whispered, exiting the room. Chapter 3 Tommy was standing on an open rooftop looking up at the stars. It was a beautiful night, really. Tommy took a deep breath of the warm air, forgetting that it was a bad idea as he doubled over in pain, letting out a painful cough. Once he had recovered, he sat down, letting his legs dangle over the edge of the roof. He kicked his legs and tilted his head back for a moment before straightening back up. It's a nice night, isn't it? A voice said in his ear, and Tommy jumped, whirling around, to see none other than Siren. Oh, fuck off, ma'am, Tommy spat, narrowing his eyes at the man in front of him. The villain raised his hands in mock respect. Surrender before smiling. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Just wanted to see my favorite vigilante. Didn't scare me, you just startled me, Tommy huffed. Sorry. Siren just shook his head. Of course. How's your stomach? My what? Tommy stuttered, his eyes widening slightly. The villain frowned. Got stabbed, didn't you? How did you know that? Tommy asked sharply, narrowing his eyes. What do you Siren cut himself off, and Tommy saw a flash of concern in his eyes. How much do you remember? The man asked softly. I remember... Tommy paused, scrunching up his face as he tried to remember the previous night. Most of the night was blurry, but he remembered it well enough. He shivered. I remember fighting with Dream. Then I got stabbed. Then got tossed into an alleyway, I think, Tommy said, shaking his head. I don't remember what happened after that or how I got out of there. Tommy looked and was surprised when he saw a pained expression on Siren's face. What? What? I, I, sorry, I just saw you fall into the alleyway, and I tried to help you, and somehow you got up and ran, Siren said carefully, as he scanned Tommy's face as if he was looking for something. Well, I'm glad I did, I, even if I don't remember it, Tommy said, scowling. I don't know what you would have done with me. I wouldn't have hurt you. I have morals, even if I am a villain, Siren said, a small, a small frown shadowing his face. I have to go, Tommy said, shoving past the man. Red, wait, please? Tommy ignored the man's pleas and jumped as he jumped off the building into the alleyway below. Tommy, sc- oh. Tommy scrambled through Tubbo's window, shouting as he changed out of his vigilante outfit. I gotta go home now, Toby. Forgot to tell him I was with you last night. Tommy heard Tubbo swear. You really have to get better at that, Tommy, or they're gonna find out a lot sooner than you want them to. I know, I know, but I really gotta go. But I really gotta go. See you later, Tubbs. Tommy heard Tubbo return the goodbye as he shut the door and ran to the elevator. Tommy sprinted down the streets to his house, trying not to dread what his family was going to say. Tommy finally made it to his house as he opened the and he opened the door to a very mad Wilbur. Chapter four. Where have you been? Wilbur shouted, making Tommy flinch away from him. I was at Tubbo's. Tommy offered, backing away from Wilbur's angry gaze. Then I, then why didn't you say anything, Wilbur demanded. I forgot to. I'm sorry. His brother scoffed, dragging, grabbing his arm and roughly dragging him into the house. 
The motion made his stomach scream in agony, but he made sure not to wince. Don't ever do that again, Wilbur spat, letting go of Tommy's arm. Tommy risked looking up at Wilbur's face, and for the first time, Tommy saw worry and relief in his eyes. I'm sorry, Tommy said again, looking back at the floor, rubbing his looking back at the floor, rubbing his arm. Wilbur had grabbed him. You better be. We're about to report you missing, Wilbur muttered before shouting, "Dad, Techno, he's back!" Tommy winced as he saw his father come rushing down the stairs with Techno not far behind. Where have you been? Are you hurt? His father asked in a rush, putting a hand on either side of his Tommy's face. I was at Tubbo's. I don't I don't see why you suddenly care when I leave. You never have before, Tommy snapped, pulling out of his father's grasp. Tommy saw his father's eyes sparkling with hurt. You're a brother, of course we care, Techno said. After a moment. When was the last time you even talked to me? When I was six, Tommy snarled. I'm going to my room. He saw a confused look a cra- confused look flash across all their faces. Tom's wait were restarted before cutting himself off as he saw Tommy's face. Tommy turned and stormed up the stairs and marched down the hall to his room and slammed the door. Tommy walked over to his bed, flopped down, grabbing his pillow and screamed into it. Tommy sat up and glared at the pillow. So now they care. Now they care. Tommy screamed, stomach aching from the effort as he punched the pillow. It took him a moment to stop yelling, but when he did, he rolled over and stared at the ceiling. He sighed, closing his eyes for a moment before opening them again. He laid there for a few more minutes, then he heard someone walking down the hallway to his room. His room. Tommy quickly pulled the covers over himself and pretended to be asleep. Tom's? Over a soft voice came from the other side of the door. Tommy tensed, and it, but then forced himself to relax as Wilbur gently opened the door to look inside. He stood there for a moment before walking over to sit on the side of Tommy's bed. You're out like a light, huh? Wilbur said, running his hands through Tommy's hair. Tommy forced himself to breathe evenly as Wilbur continued. I don't know why you got so upset earlier, Wilbur murmured. You disappeared for almost two days, Tommy, and expected for us not to be worried. Wilbur continued to murmur for a while, but Tommy eventually drifted off into a troubled sleep. Chapter 5 Tommy woke up to some it's supposed to be someone. Someone gently shaking his shoulder. He groaned, shoving the hand away. You have to get up, sunshine, he heard his brother say, but it sounded far away as so he began to drift back off to sleep. Tom's over his voice sounded a little worried. It's wrong, Tommy slurred, cracking his eyes open. But I thought you sounded in pain, Wilbur said, sounding uncertain. But I must have imagined it. You did, Tommy snapped, but it was muffled by his pillow. Tom's, if you're hurt, you can tell me, his brother said slowly. Not hurt, Wilbur, go away, Tommy huffed. Tommy, it's seven, and you have school at 7.30, Wilbur reminds him. Tommy sighed, throwing his blanket off, and he swung his legs over the edge of the bed. Go, Wilbur, go away, Wilbur, I need to get dressed. Tommy snapped, glaring at the man in front of him. Fine, breakfast on the table. Wilbur turned and exited the room. The moment Wilbur was out of earshot, he groaned, lifting his shirt. He winced as he saw blood seeping through the bandages wrapped around his stomach. Tommy slowly stood, holding his stomach as he made his way to his bed, his bathroom. He slowly closed and locked the door the second he was safely inside. Tommy started removing the old bandages and replacing them with fresh ones. He shoved the bloody bandages into the bath, the bottom of the bin, covering them with other garbage. Once he was satisfied with his work, he exited the bathroom and got changed into a pair of tan cargo pants and a white t-shirt with red sleeves. Tommy quickly grabbed his vigilante outfit, shoved it into his backpack, swinging it over his shoulder. Making his way downstairs, he started to head to the front door when he heard Techno call out to him. You haven't eaten. Don't have time, Tommy yelled back, rushing out the front door, not waiting for a response. His family didn't need to know that he didn't have school anymore. It's not like they cared. They just wanted to get him out of the way so they could work in peace. He sighed, heading in the direction of his old school, just in case any of them were watching. As far as Tommy's concerned, he can do anything he wants just as long as he gets home by 2.30. Once Tommy was far enough from his house, he turned to the street of a small bakery. It read, Nikki's Bakery. Well, that's where I'm going to stop today. That's just the rough draft of current work I'm working on, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you'll come back for next part, and see you next time. Bye.